The following is an exclusive presentation of the NCCU Sports Network. Let's get it on three, man. Let's get it on three. One, two, three. Let's get it. Ooh, go. Y'all boys run out. Yeah. What you got? Let's make some up, baby. Be sure. Yeah. 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 Hey, let's go, baby. One game at a time. One more step. All right? Great discipline, great effort. Love and energy. But we got to keep it going for four quarters. You can't start high being died out. One play at a time, one quarter at a time. You guys understand? It's going to take a lot. Let's get it done. Let's go. Let's go. One, go, three. One, two, three. Work. Seniors, where you at? It's their last go around. You don't get this opportunity no more. Come out here and play ball with your dogs. Your brothers. You get the opportunity to come out here and play with your brothers. In front of all these people who want to see you win. We're not going to let them down. We got to handle business. Physical and nasty. That's what gets it done. D-line in the backfield. O-line finishing blocks, making plays. Let's go to work. Big boy started. Let's go. Let's go, y'all.
We came up with the plays when we needed to come up with the plays. That's the biggest thing that happened tonight. Uh, you know, we had, we had explosive touchdowns in the passing game. Uh, we ran the ball pretty decent as well tonight. So overall, you know, it was one of those bend but don't breaks on defense and offensively. When we needed a big play, we had guys step up and make the big play. Seemed like those big plays all came in the fourth quarter. Are you guys just saving them and then going to unload them all right then? Well, one thing is that you, but this team just never know how it's going to work out. Uh, you know, they did a good job of, of staying focused. That's one thing we talked about a ton. Uh, we knew it was going to be a battle. Norfolk State is a really good football team. Uh, Coach Scott is doing a great job over there. And like I said, they're the best two and five team, you know, I've ever seen. So we knew it was going to come down to the wire. and We just had to keep playing for four quarters. And we found a way like we've been doing all year to win. Do you feel like the rhythm kind of got shaken up a little bit when Malcolm threw that interception right there on the first drive? I did. I thought we were moving the ball well. Uh, I, I was really excited about where we were going. We had the first few plays scripted, and we had stayed on script. Uh, just made a bad read, to be honest with you. Uh, it was play was still open. But, uh, you know, like we always say, you know, we're going to – something's bad is going to happen. We're still going to have to play football. And that's something bad that happened, and, you know, we kept playing. Okay, and you guys, you know, had been really heavy on the run the last couple of weeks. This week was a more balanced attack, and you had more passing yards than run yards. Was that a conscious decision made throughout the week, or was it something you kind of got into the game today and then adjusted? Well, we knew we had we we're going to have to throw the ball uh, and be balanced going forward. You know, we cannot, although our running game is doing a really good job, we're going to have to be a balanced attack in order to do what we need to do. Uh, offensive line is playing well, running backs are playing well, uh, but we needed those receivers to step up. And tonight, Jalen, Jalen Wilkes and Armani Lanier, they did a great job of stepping up. Uh, Malcolm threw the ball. Fairly decent tonight, made some mistakes, but you know when we had to make the throw and catch, he did. Did it feel like he? It took a couple of quarters for him to get his rhythm back, and that seemed to come back in the fourth. It did. You know, anytime you can get Malcolm in a rhythm as far as running and passing, uh, just get him into the flow of the game as much as possible. We always feel like we got a chance with him. Uh, he's a guy that's a rhythm guy, like a lot of quarterbacks are. So he got in the rhythm, uh, and he just kind of stayed in the rhythm toward the end. Defensively, Richard Mitchell had that huge sack right there on fourth down. How much did you know? How much has he kind of come along this season? Oh, he's been great for us, Richard. You know, his senior year and his last year here at North Carolina Central, he's doing a great job of pressing the pocket and, and creating turnovers and getting sacks. Uh, he's just been playing at a high level right now, and that's one thing we talked about with Richard uh, going into the season is we just needed more from him to step up as a senior on our football team, and and he's done it. He, we, he's done everything we asked him. Okay, and on the play before that, I think Theo had the big pass breakup. How crucial was he in this game? Oh, that was huge. I mean, him, uh, Theo Livingston, and C.J. Moore, I think both of them had about 13 tackles apiece. Uh, those guys just showed up. We knew that Norfolk was going to come out. He was going to try to throw the ball versus our defense. Uh, and we did a good job of, of breaking up passes, being in those seams, uh, being in those windows when we needed to be in those windows. And, you know, it just all worked out for us. How challenging was it to kind of try to stop Hankerson? I know he got that 77-yard touchdown run, but what what kind of challenge was that? You know, we told those guys all week, you know, he's Houdini. You know, he's going to find a way to, to manipulate manipulate defenders and get around guys, and that's what he did. Uh, he had a long touchdown. I mean, I think he made everybody on the field miss, and we knew he was dangerous going into the game. He's been doing it all year. Uh, he showed it on film, so we just had to do a good job of not letting just one man beat us. So we wanted other guys to step up and make plays, and but we also knew our defensive line played well last week, and I don't know how many sacks they had, probably four maybe, I don't know, but uh, they did a good job of pressing the pocket, and when they needed those sacks, they were able to press the pocket and get it. Okay, and what did you tell your team? What were you talking about during that 15-minute kind of delay when there was the injury time and, you know, trying to get the player up on the cart and all of that? How do you kind of handle that? Uh, first of all, you know, you're worried about the young man across from across the field because at the end of the day, uh, all those players are, you know, uh, our players, you know, at the end of the day. Uh, but we, we were really concerned about his well-being, and, and I'll check on him. I talked to Coach Scott tonight and see how he's doing. But uh, also, too, you know, we were probably about that five-minute mark. We wanted to make sure that we got those guys stretched and got those guys loose. Uh, we got to get them back focused. You know, sometimes things like that happen in the course of the game, and we did a good job of getting them on the sideline, getting them loose and getting them ready. You know, we scored a touchdown right after that, so that was good. Hey, Coach, you mentioned the four sacks from the front four. They've barely been big over the past few games. Uh, as you held Morgan State for negative rushing yards last week. What's really clicking for them at the front? Our uh, defensive line. Uh, I said it last week, and I'll say it again this week. Coach Blaylock and Coach Bradley do a great job of keeping the intensity up with our defensive line. Uh, we've had a mistake dinner last week, so I guess they're going to earn another one this week. Uh, but Jaqu uh, Jaquan Smith. Uh, Richard Mitchell, like I said, Trey Smith and Darius Brew, and also Cyrus Stanback, the young guy. He's doing a great job. All, all those guys, all five, six guys, those guys are doing a good job when they get the opportunity to, to get in the game, and they understand how important that the defensive line is. Four and one in conference play, one game left at home, senior day. How do you feel going forward to Delaware State? 
Uh, we got to play for the seniors. It's their last game uh, at home in the North Carolina Central uniform, and I'm hoping we understand the importance that we do control our own destiny. Uh, we're going to try to put five in a row together. Uh, Dale State, just watching them on film, you know, they're a dangerous team. You know, anytime you play a team that doesn't have a win right now, you know, they don't have anything to lose. So they're going to throw the kitchen sink at us, and we got to be ready for anything they throw at us. Uh, I think as a unit, I think we've progressed uh, offensively and defensively. I think uh, we really stepped up uh, on the offensive side. I know uh, me, I know I made some plays coming off the bench. Uh, I mean, to sound cocky or anything, but uh, also we had Armani Lanier. He came in and uh, made a big, um, I think it's a 70 yard touchdown or so, man. That was just a big statement. Uh, we actually mean business in the MEAC. That's what we, that's what we want to do. You guys have been mostly a run team for a lot of this season. Were you kind of sitting, waiting for your number to be called, waiting for that passing game to really get going? Actually, uh, yeah, I was actually. Um, I know uh, actually sitting on the bench, I was actually waiting for uh, one of our guys to uh, actually make a play because I knew they had the capability to actually do that. So I knew um, it was actually a matter of time before they called their, uh, their play and I knew they were going to make that play. Okay. Earlier this season, you had a couple drops. Um, how have you kind of worked through that to be able, you know, to maybe shake off any freshman jitters or anything you might have? Uh, at first, I really didn't believe in the freshman jizz, but they actually they actually got to me quicker than I thought, actually. Um, but uh, as the season went on, I just think I just needed to mature a little bit. Um, just realize that the game is just football. You know, I grew up playing it, and I can, just, I can do it at a different level. That's the, my biggest thing. But uh, I feel like as long as I just keep my mind uh, level-headed, man, I'll just be, I'll be fine. Yeah. How much more dangerous are you guys as an offense, knowing that you've got a strong run game with Darrell McLean, and now you guys have established that, thro that strong passing game? Uh, I think uh, we're starting to be the most dynamic team um, overall. I think um, as rushing, we're still uh, leading, I believe so, after the night, I don't know. But uh, passing-wise, I think we're actually starting to show people that we can do this also. You know, we're, we're actually a threat. Um, I know a lot of teams that don't really respect us on the uh, outsides because um, we haven't made as many, as many plays if we wanted to. But I think after the night, uh, they'll see that, um, you know, we're also a threat uh, besides the rail and um, our other running backs. Talk about those helmets. I know you probably were excited to put those on today. Yeah, man, they actually um, gave us to us uh, Tuesday. So we walked in the locker room uh, before practice and we seen them. And uh, it was just a nice surprise. You know, anytime we get some, uh, any new gear, it's just a big deal for us. So, yeah, we're just really thankful for that. So now it's the middle of this three-game homestand, the final game coming up at home, senior day next week. How do you feel going forward to Delaware State? Uh, I really feel confident. I feel like um, after this win, I really do feel like um, we have to just execute uh, week by week until we get to um, – the final showdown, which you all know is uh, North Carolina ANC. So we're just um, going week by week, and uh, I feel like we're progressing uh, more and more. I felt like it was a great team win. The defense played amazing with uh, Theo, Richard. They all played amazing. CJ, the whole, the whole defense. It was just a great team win. So you had one catch, but it was a big one. <laughs> What's going through your mind when you see the ball coming your way and you're just running down the field? Just hoping that I catch it and run to the end zone as fast as I can. That's all, that's all in my head. Just don't get caught. And I did. When, you know, earlier in the game, did it feel like the rhythm kind of got a little bit shaken up with that interception on the first drive? Yeah, I, I felt like we were, we were moving the ball down, down the field a little bit, and that interception kind of killed our vibe and mojo. So we just had to wait, our, wait for our turn again. What did it have to take to get that rhythm back? It seemed like as soon as the fourth quarter hit, it was, it was there. We just had to realize we had to wake up and what we had to do to win this game and to keep our hopes alive to go into the Celebration Bowl and all the other good stuff like that. Okay, and that was the longest pass play since I think 1999. What, is, what does that mean to you? What were you doing in 1999? Uh, school, uh, <laughs> eating baby food. I don't, no, um, it, was, it was a great throw by Malcolm Bell and I was just, I was just open at the time. It was a great play. You, ne you weren't necessarily high up on the depth chart at the start of the season, but some injuries kind of shook that up. How do you feel like you've been able to step in and really make an impact? Well, our coach, uh, Chris Bruckner, has always talked about the next man up and always being ready, and I was just ready. We always take the reps and practice and everything, and I felt like I was ready to step into that role when um, other players got hurt. All right, so now in the middle of this two-game homestand, you got Delaware State coming up next. How do you feel going forward? Uh, Delaware State is definitely a dangerous team, just like Coach Mack was talking about. We still have to have our mind focused and just be ready to play and can't have another slip up just like this game. Another tough win, another tough win at home. You know, it's always good to get that, get a win like that at home. And, um, you know, we, like we were saying um, on that last drive, this is, we won't want it no other way. You know, we're so used to that. So we know anytime uh, it's a close game and games on the line, um, as a team, we have an advantage because I don't think any team we play from here on out has been in as many close games as we have. 
What's it like having to go up against and chase around Hankerson, who was, I think, your coach called Houdini? I mean, I think it's fitting that it's Halloween now because he had the costume on already and he was running all around. He's a good player. We knew that coming in, though. We, we weren't surprised. It wasn't like we got we weren't we didn't get out there and we were like, oh, who is this guy? We knew who he was. We knew he was going to make plays. Maybe not to that extent, but we knew he was going to make plays. And our our job was to contain him. I think. We did a great job of that for most of the game, you know, coverage-wise in the back end. And then um, the uh, D-line, they cleaned up every play, and they did a great job uh, containing him, really, except that one run. Speaking of the D-line, how big was Richard Mitchell's sack there on that, first, on that fourth down? I mean, it's huge. You know, Rich always tells us if we give him four seconds, he's back there. So we just try to hold up in coverage long enough. We know one of them um, big dogs up front is going to get to him. And Rich had a great game, like always. And, you know, it's great when his stats show up because he does so much for us, flushing the uh, quarterback out the pocket and, you know, just holding his gap. And, you know, he just made plays today like he always does for us. And on that play before, Theo had the big pass breakup. How big was he today? He was, I mean, he was huge for us. We knew they were going to throw the ball to the field. Um, you know, me and Ryan kind of played to the boundary, so we kind of knew there was going to be more emphasis on throwing to the field. And they, they threw it to the field. They tested us over there. And uh, Theo and those guys held up. Like, they, we know they were going to do. We knew they were going to hold up. And underneath coverage has been huge for us. Um, you know, we had to get better. That's an area we need to get better in, uh, covering underneath. And Theo stepped up today, and so did uh, Jordan Miles. Those guys stepped up underneath coverage. Emotions do you have playing your last homecoming game? Well, it's bittersweet, you know. It's it's one of those feelings where you know you can't describe how it feels to walk out there and see all the people you've been playing with and you've known pretty much since you grew up here, since you were 17 years old, and you come out there and those guys are hyped because they're really playing through you now. And you know that when you when you watch them, it's kind of like looking in the mirror because that's going to be you next year. So. It's bittersweet, you know. It's one of those things where it gives you a joint of energy. Like you have to go out there and perform for these guys. Like um, so, it's special. It's it's real special. Is it kind of like a taste of the emotion you're gonna have next week for your senior day? A little bit. I mean, homecoming and senior day are two different, you know, plateaus. Because senior day is something special. You know, that's out there. That's our field. You know, that's that's for five years. We put in a lot of work on that field and. We bleed, sweat, cry on that field, and we, a lot of things have happened on that field. So, um, you know, senior day is a little bit different than a homecoming, but emotion levels are, for both of them are really high. Well, you get to put your final homecoming, some brand new black helmets. How to feel to put those on today? Real good. You know, anytime you look good, you play good. So <laughs> it was good. You know, all black is something that we've been preaching and preaching and preaching. And the alumni, they didn't want to do it. And everyone was like, no, no, no. So, um, you know, Coach Matt getting in here, he, he's a younger guy. He kind of persuaded everyone to go all black and all black. Um, I think we look great out there. And, um, you know, pretty much all year long, they've been doing a great job with the uniform combos. So um, it was special putting on black. And I think the, um, it was really special for the guys coming back who have always wanted that. And they, you know, get a chance to see that all black on their field. Um, it's special for them, too. Well, you have one more game ahead at home. It's Delaware State next week. How do you feel heading forward? Um, good, good. We're in a good position right now. You know, we're, we're where we want to be in the, in the race, in the title hunt. So every game is important. And I think next week uh, versus Delaware State, this is a dangerous time in the season for any team. So it's kind of one of those things where you can't look at anyone's record at this point because teams are hungry for wins. And, um, you know, those seniors, uh, it's a little special for those guys on every team right now because they're coming down to their last few games. So you never know what people are capable of when you're playing with that type of emotion. So it's going to be, you know, it's going to be a tough game. They're going to come in here ready to spoil um, senior night. And then we got to step up. We got to, uh, you know, continue doing what we're doing, find ways to win. Um, hopefully it's not another nail biter. I don't know how many more of these I could do, but, you know, hopefully we'll get, you know, we'll, we'll prepare for them like we do any other team every other week. Uh, we just came out and played uh, hard on all cylinders every phase of the game. Uh, we just came out and got the victory for homecoming. Did it feel like your rhythm was at all shaken up in that first drive of the first quarter? <laughs> Yeah, uh, anytime you come out and throw a pick on the first drive, that's uh, is a momentum killer. But uh, we just bounced back, we stayed the course, and uh, we just got it done. What kind of what did it take to kind of get your rhythm back? It looked like it maybe reappeared in the fourth quarter there. Um, 
I guess getting the field, running the ball a little bit, uh, getting the crowd hyped up, getting momentum. We just they were kind of milking the clock on offense, so we couldn't get a lot of possessions. But uh, uh, when we got out there, we had to make something happen, uh, create a spark. Okay, and something that did happen was that 77-yard touchdown throw. What kind of developed for that to open up? Um, all week we're just uh, banking on the safety to stay and uh, take the inside post, and uh, we just hit the big ball for uh, 77 yards. Okay, are you kind of amazed that I think that was the longest pass play since 1999? Are you serious? Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. It was a long <laughs> pass, though, but uh, uh, kudos to Armani. He just ran up under it, and uh, he made the guy. I guess he was just trailing him the whole time. It was, uh, it was a great play. When you were kind of struggling with your rhythm, did were you then consciously making the decision to keep the ball and run just to you know make sure that you weren't throwing other picks or anything like that? Well, Coach always says if it looks cloudy, uh, if you're not sure, just pull it down and run. So uh, sometimes when it looks cloudy or I can't see, then I'll just uh, go ahead and pull it down. Okay, and how much more dangerous are you guys now that you know you have your run game firmly established? Today it showed that you guys can be a balanced offense and have that passing game too. Um, well, it's almost the end of the year, but uh, it, it's great uh, that we can, you know, throw the ball and, and run the ball with uh, McLean and me. Uh, it's just it's nice to have a balanced attack always. All right, so I got to ask you, how did it feel to get out there with those brand new helmets today? Oh, it was cool. We've been uh, practicing them all week, but uh, it was cool to show the fans all black. That was nice. And with Delaware State coming up next week, how do you feel going into senior day? I feel pretty confident. Uh, these next two games, this should be winnable games. Uh, I have a showdown in Greensboro, so I'm looking really uh, forward to that title shot. This has been an exclusive presentation of the NCCU Sports Network.